to make this video to talk about all the options you can do for installing a radiator because I haven't seen many online about all the different ways you can actually do it. So I usually see the one standard connection that everyone does for these, but I think there's a lot of different options that are important to understand if you're someone who installs these a lot or if you're looking to install one in your home. So like I said, there's basically like an unlimited amount of options if you consider all the different fittings and piping options you can do. So I just want to go over the ones that make the most sense and uh, show you what they look like because a lot of it is up to just personal style since most of the fittings connected to your supply uh, does the same thing. So for this install, just imagine that this is a regular floor and you're installing this in your home or if you're installing it. So it's, it comes like this and there's four connections for supply and return like most radiators. These come with little caps in here that you just gotta take off, they're pretty easy. You just toss them to the side. And what's important to know about these is the top connections are one inch and the bottom are an inch and a quarter. So any unused connections you have to plug. So these don't come with it, these are just black iron plugs. And when you put them in, just use thread sealant or pipe tape and uh, it'll get a complete connection. Then you just want to wrench to get it in. I'm going to put it slightly in just for the installation. I don't want to put it all the way. But it looks a little bit better than this when it's all the way in. So just put those on top. So if you're hooking up for steam or for hot water use, you're always going to need a relief valve on the side. Every radiator has one. This one has a, a couple 1 8 inch connections for installing a relief valve. So I'm going to choose the one right here because for the installation, we're going to pretend like this is the supply side and you always want to put it on the return side or uh, the closed off side because obviously for steam, there's no return. So I already loosened this little bit that comes in the radiator so it's easy to take out. And what I'm going to put in for the steam uh, relief is this very valve. And it's a pretty good little valve. And it's, it works pretty quietly. It doesn't have any sound. And what's great about this is it has a little uh, adjuster right here. So this controls the amount of steam that's released. And it effectively works as a temperature changer. So if you want to let out more steam, then it just lowers the temperature slightly. But if you're setting up a radiator for hot water use, then you'll want to install this on the return side. It's called a coin key air valve and it's very simple. You just screw it in with some thread sealant right here instead of this and uh, it just releases the pressure when you have this little key and you unscrew it. It's manual but there's other options for ones that are automatic. So whether you're installing this for hot water or steam, you're going to need a bushing at the bottom because like I said before, it's one and a quarter inch and there's not going to be supply lines that are one and a quarter inch wide. So most will be a half inch, three quarter inch, or one inch at the biggest probably. So what you need is this bushing. You just have to order a few of these. This is one and a quarter inch to three quarter inch and it's threaded. So before I put in a radiator valve to connect my supply line to, you just need uh, this bushing. And to put this all the way in, you need a spud wrench. But for the installation, I'm just gonna put it in a little bit. And once you have the spud wrench, it'll be all the way closed and it'll look way more uh, sleek. So for the steam install, I just want to put this standard radiator steam valve on and you, this is the most popular thing that's installed. It's just a shutoff valve for steam and it's a union connection. So I'm going to connect it to my copper pipe. So this was just a quick setup. This is the radiator valve and then you have the relief valve and these are plugged at the top because you don't need those for steam and there's no return line obviously. So this we use a little plug here. So next I'm going to show you a couple different setups if you don't want to use a valve. This is a three quarter inch 90 degree street elbow and it's made out of black iron too. It fits right in the bushing and this is just another option you can use if you want one that blends in more with your radiator. So this looks kind of cool because it's pretty low key and I just want to point out again that these threads won't be showing once you tighten it all the way so it looks a little bit better than it will right here but it does look still pretty good. So another option for your supplies is radiator elbow like it works with a union connection as well so you just screw it in and for this, you also need a spud wrench. So they, those are some basic steam setups. There's a ton of configurations, like I said. Now I just want to walk you through some hot water configurations. And I'm going to do some with PEX this time just to change it up. And for the hot water configuration, you can't use that very valve. So like I said before, there's this little coin key valve, it's called. And this just releases uh, hot air that's built up in the system. So you just install it here or 
any other valve because it needs a valve like I said before. So since we're doing a hot water installation, you need to take this plug off because there's going to be a return line. And like the other side, like I showed you before, you need a bushing, a bushing for connecting to your return line. So you just screw that in. And again, you're going to need a spud wrench to tighten it all the way. I've got my supply side set up with a radiator valve and PEX. And you can see the PEX here. We're going to use it for both sides now. And for this one configuration, I'm going to use this elbow, which is a union connection. It's going to go into this crimp or clamp PEX connector. And then I'm going to use this uh, crimp ring with the crimp tool to connect it. So this is just with a radiator valve and this has the PEX connection right to the elbow. But if you don't want PEX sticking out, you can connect this to a pipe nipple and then connects your PEX uh, under your floor to the pipe nipple to make it look cleaner with the pipe nipple sticking out. Another option is to just use these PEX elbow fittings on both sides and you could even take out the radiator valve if you don't think it's necessary. And you can have a shut off directly at the manifold if you want a nice clean look like this. So this is an example, if you don't want to use a radiator valve, like I said, you can just have two sides with the same uh, setup. And I just want to point out again that the bushings will be all the way tightened when you do your install, so it won't be sticking out this much. And if you don't like PEC showing to your floor, I'll show you what it looks like with um, a setup kind of like this, but with two um, pipe nipples. These are three quarter inch black 90 degree street elbows. And this is just another option that you have for making your install. I'm going to just install these directly onto the radiator without a radiator valve and you'll see what it looks like. So with this, you would definitely want to make sure you have precise measurements when you do this professionally. Again, I want to say that the threads will not be showing, so it'll look a little bit better, but this is how it looks with these elbows being used. And I like these a lot because it matches uh, the radiator. So it look, it fits right in. And it also doesn't have this clunky valve on the end, so it just looks a little bit cleaner. But uh, this does make sense to use for just as a shutoff, but if you use it this way, then you just got to connect it to your manifold. And then when you want to shut off your radiator, you go down to your manifold and shut it off. So I chose to work with the smallest cast iron radiator we have because it's just easier to work with. But obviously, there's much larger ones than this, and these are built very well. The only thing I want to mention is that some of them are a little bit not, they're not level because they're not perfectly cut, which is because it's really hard to do that. But once you have it installed, it doesn't wobble at all. And if there is still some wobble, you can take a little piece of felt and just slide it under a leg and it'll fix the problem. But pretty much all radiators have that problem. It's not unique to this. And another thing, thing I want to mention is to use uh, oxygen barrier tubing when you're doing radiant heating because you don't want any oxygen entering your system and making this rust. Another way to prevent that is to use air eliminators, which just simply get any air bubbles out of your system when you have this setup in. So it just keeps the oxygen out and keeps your products fine. Another thing I want to tell you to add is this Y strainer, which simply connects, um, it collects dust and particles and rust particles that enter your system. And it has a manual release. So all you have to do is go into your basement or wherever you install it and unscrew the bottom part where all the dust and particles collect and it just falls right out. So the video I did right before this, uh, I talked about the difference between radiant heat and convection heat, which is pretty important to understand if you're looking to heat your home because you really might want to consider using a radiator over a baseboard or a forced air heater, like a regular heater that sits up on the ceiling. So make sure you check that out if you're looking to install any heat in your home and subscribe to the channel to find any video like this and a bunch of other stuff on plumbing or anything HVAC related and like the video if you liked it.